We meet here tonight clandestinely to publicly, without fear or equivocation, say that we stand up and believe in science and math. It's really a thing. You can believe it. It's fine. Yeah. Let's give it up to science and math. This feels, this feels like a little equivocation when we clandestinely got it, right? It just has that feeling. Uh, but seriously, tonight we're going to be inducting seven winners into the Sloan Awards for Excellence in Teaching Science and Math, which with this prize will make you part of the 1%. Not because of the prize money, I mean 1% of the people eligible for this award. So, so yeah, I, I, wanted to clear, I wanted to clear that up there. But it's, we can't think of a more important topic to gather for in 2022, in terms of the celebration of excellence in teaching, excellence in teaching in our public schools, Excellence in teaching around STEM, and excellence in teaching right here in New York City. We can't think of a better, better, better way to celebrate. And while New York City is a big city of over eight and a half million people, over a million students in our public school system, a lot usually takes up the oxygen in our home. And you would know better than me what can take up oxygen. But a lot of noise happens in New York City on a daily basis. And we don't have time sometimes to pause and really think of what's important, and really celebrate what's important. And today, tonight, we celebrate what we really fundamentally believe is most important in New York City, and that's our teachers. So give it up for the teachers. Of New York. <laughs> and while there's a lot of noise in New York City, we want to make sure that we make efforts to make sure that we provide our students with the best STEM education the world can provide. So give it up for STEM educators. <laughs> With that said, I bring up our first uh, speaker, who's the president of the Fund for the City of New York, an educator herself as well, uh, President Lisette Nieves. Lisette? Hi, everyone. Yay. Hey. Hey. Before I start my remarks, can you just give an extra special thank you to Oliver Rafael Bonilla? <laughs> And I know he was going to be running this particular program. He just took it to a whole new place and has inspired so many people with it. And it's a reflection of how deeply rooted in community he is, but how brilliant he is as well, too. He's shy to say it. He's almost done with his doctorate. So let's give him some energy for that. And I want to make sure he knows that I appreciate it. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Lisette Nieves. I'm so proud to be here. I'm the president of the Fund for the City of New York. I will tell you that it is great to see so many people here that are in STEM careers. I was joking about it, but I actually feel really comfortable in this group. I'm married to a software engineer, and he's very linear. And, and, and I'm not. But it was like, what works, what works about it is just the excitement around how everyday things work, right? This is the beauty of also being married to an engineer and to being close to engineers. And one thing I will say that I think is super exciting about this, I'm also a product of the public school system. I have gone through public school from first grade all the way through my undergrad. And I have to tell you that I know that teachers made a difference in my life. There's a reason why I'm a first generation, right? Puerto Riquenia, here in New York City, the first to win a Rhodes from a public university, and I am proud of that because that happened because of our public schools. So when people tell us that we can't produce the best students, they are lying because we do all the time. Um, and yet we still know that we can push and do better and increase the numbers who are doing well. But tonight is about those who have been doing that every day. So thank you to the teachers who were selected. If you could stand up real quickly, please. Set of school leaders and 
incredible students. So I would like to thank them too. Applause for our school leaders. I also want to say something to all the staff at the fund. Thank you all for being here. Everything that happens here is because someone decided to do a little bit more outside of their roles to make it happen. And so I want to thank them. Thank you, fun folks. Gracias. Thank you. Before I transition to our next speaker, I do want to say this one part. And it's to all the people who were part of the nomination and the selection process. Thank you. I don't get to sit and vote. That's really important. Aldrin and I, we do not vote. We feel really strong about that. We get the top people to come in and vote on that. We have former math teachers, physicists, you get all of them. They're all coming from all over. And they unanimously supported who is well today. And I want to thank our selection committee. If you could stand real quickly, please, so everyone can see you. and turn it into the most diverse and interesting sets of careers, right? So if you get a chance to meet any of the panelists, ask them about what was their kind of uh, trajectory. I think it'd be exciting to hear that too. Well, now I get to transition to the next person. We are excited at the fund. We're very, we're very proud about being independent. We do not, typically the only, the only, if you notice this act, the only foundation we've ever really recognized and allowed to brand has been the Sloan Foundation with us. And there's a reason for it. Because we feel really strong about what are A, the ethics, what is their commitment to that, what is the support, the freedom we have, right? All those kinds of things. So we're proud to say that Sloan is a sponsor for this. Um, Sloan has the same passion that we have for this, and we're excited about that. And they also have a great president, who is Adam Falk, who is a theoretical physicist himself, former college president of Williams College, um, someone that has a great sense of humor, but is really happy to geek out with you at a moment's notice, all right? With that said, I really want to thank Adam Falk for being here. He's going to say some comments, but also for sponsoring this incredible event tonight. Thank you so much. Come on. So good evening. Uh, I'm going to start by uh, just thanking everyone at the Fund for the City of New York. It is, we are deeply grateful to be able to sponsor, and that's all we do is sponsor. All of the hard work is done by the Fund and the Selection Committee, uh, but we are deeply grateful to be able to sponsor these awards. They mean a tremendous amount to all of us at the Sloan Foundation. So um, thank you very, very much to everyone at the Fund. So as Lisette said, I'm Adam Falk. I'm the president here at the Alfred B. Sloan Foundation. And I'm really, I, I'm really humbled to be here with all of you this evening to honor some of the most important people in the city of New York who are the teachers who are here with us tonight. So, probably haven't heard of the Sloan Foundation. <laughs> what do we do? Well, primarily what we actually do is that we make grants to support scientific research in fields like astronomy and chemistry and biology and physics and geology and economics even. And so you might wonder, why is it that a foundation that sponsors research is sponsoring these awards for public high school teachers? Well, the reason is actually simple and it's straightforward. It's because at the Sloan Foundation, what we know is that we're never going to produce the next generation of amazing astronomers and chemists and biologists and physicists and geologists and economists if we don't make, per don't make certain that every single person in our society has the real opportunity to participate in the exhilarating journey that is science. So let me say that again. Every single person must be able to participate in science. And the place that we make sure of that, the place that we make sure that every single person can participate is our public school system. So there are a million or so students in the New York City public schools and if you do the math, that's about one out of every 300 Americans is currently a student in the New York City public school system. <laughs> so think about that. This is where our future is being made. And it is our teachers who make that future. 
in their classrooms, with their students. So if a science curriculum is like music that's been written on a page, teachers are the players who bring that music to life, who make it sing, who give it meaning, who bring out its beauty, and who leave us hungry for more. That is what, each in their own way, the seven extraordinary teachers we are celebrating tonight are doing for their students. But, and I've read the citations, their students aren't in the audience just listening to the music. Instead, their students are seeing every day that they can participate in science and participate in discovery, and if they so choose, decide to become scientists themselves. Let me tell you, it's great to become scientists yourself. <laughs> Every one of tonight's honorees has had this kind of indelible effect on the students whose lives they have touched. They've helped students to see wholly new possibilities for themselves, for what they can do, and for who they can be. There is no greater gift than that to give a young person. And this is why we honor these extraordinary teachers. And in honoring them, we also must thank and honor thousands of other extraordinary teachers, thousands in the New York City public schools, equally dedicated to their students, just as passionate about education, and absolutely essential to the future of our city and our world. So congratulations to all of you, from every one of us at the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, and thank you from the bottom of my heart for the amazing work that you are doing. Good evening. It is an honor to be here tonight to celebrate the seven awardees of the Sloan Awards for Excellence in Teaching Science and Math. It is my pleasure as the principal of Marble Hill School for International Studies to introduce our fantastic math and peer collaborative teacher, Jeff Hamilton. For those who know me, I get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff has worked at Marble Hill for the past six years. As a principal, there are many, so many decisions we have a say in, and even more that we don't. The latter of these decisions often end up having a huge impact on, on a school, and placement of student teachers is one of those decisions. Well, Marble Hill definitely hit the jackpot. When Jeff was placed at our school as a Math for America fellow in 2013, over the years, I have been impressed with Jeff's many strengths as an educator. He is persistent both professionally and with his students. He is truly skilled at working with our most at-risk students, our multi-language learners and students with IEPs, as well as with his co-teachers. He is a deeply reflective educator, and he loves to learn. Last but not least, Jeff has immense compassion for his students and all his colleagues. All of these qualities motivate Jeff to do all he does daily to help students and staff academically, personally, and professionally. Through Jeff's ongoing participation in Math for America and his drive to continue to develop as a teacher and leader, he was motivated to pursue a peer collaborative teacher position with us this year. He passionately laid out what he hoped to do as a PCT at Marble Hill, and I was again so impressed and won over uh, in Jeff's persistence in pursuing this next step in his personal growth. He has proven his strength as a reflective and creative thinker who can lead his peers skillfully. Most impactful has been the lead Jeff has taken in implementing the Building Thinking Classroom model in our math department. After being remote for over a year, our students have overwhelmingly found the Building Thinking Math classes to be the most engaging classes that they take daily. And yes, it's not 45 minutes, but 60 minutes because these students on their feet. <laughs> students are fully involved, thinking, talking, and doing math in random groups and whiteboards on the walls around the room, collaborating with different students daily and relying on each other instead of the teachers as a resource. They are interested and empowered to try, to make mistakes, and to learn together. Jeff has helped spread this practice, practice not just in our math department, in our school, in other math departments, in other schools, and in the Math for America community. The impact Jeff has had on our students, our staff, our school culture, and on me,
has been immense. I look forward to continuing to work with Jeff and see him de develop as an educator and a leader in our school and the New York City community. Congratulations. Good evening, good evening everyone. My name is Cesar de Leon, a senior at Marble Hill School for International Studies. Throughout all my time at Marble Hill, I never had Mr. Hamilton as a teacher, or really interacted with him at all up until my senior year when I signed up for the AP Calculus Saving class. Considering that and the preconceived idea of calculus in general being a notoriously difficult subject, I wasn't really sure what to expect. Walking into class the first day, it's pretty hard to miss Mr. Hamilton's six foot five frame. So the first thing I, I, along with my other classmates, were greeted with was his bright smile and warm, positive energy. Bringing up the fact again that this was an AP calculus class, I still wasn't sure if I, should, if I would be expecting long, boring lectures followed by a pile of assignments. However, Mr. Hamilton made it clear on the first day that that's not the way he rolls. Instead, <laughs> every single day would consist of standing up at one of the whiteboards throughout the room and collab collaborating with groups of students, which in turn allows for exposure to different perspectives and growing comfortable working with other people. With that said, this has certainly been unlike any other math class I've had, and I must say, I did not expect to have as much fun as I've had in Mr. Hamilton's class solving limits and integrating functions. I believe that this way that Mr. Hamilton teaches is not only innovative, but it also gives students a chance to get a hands-on learning experience in a sense, and truly grasp the concepts we are learning and know how to apply them. As efficient as Mr. Hamilton's learning model is, I'd say that the biggest factor that has contributed to the enjoyment and progress of the class, at least for me, has been his love for math. I feel that if you have someone teaching a class with no motivation or love for a subject, it's likely that the same feeling will be reciprocated by the students. Mr. Hamilton's passion for math and teaching it, along with his ability to encourage students to think for themselves and determination to make sure the students succeed, is what sets them apart from many other math teachers. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton, for sharing your knowledge with me in a fun and memorable way. May God always bless you. Thank you. In my mathematics classes, I like to have an environment where students are constantly communicating with one another. And when they have questions, they turn to one another. While sometimes it gets a little loud, it's a lot of fun. These tasks, when do you switch the marker? When you hear the bell go off. Okay, I recently so read a book about building thinking classrooms in mathematics. So I'd like to think that I have a thinking classroom now. So if you come to my mathematics classes, you'll see students standing for nearly the entire hour. You'll see them in different groups every day, and you'll see them working on uh, various tasks posted around the room. When my students have the opportunity to come in and choose a card, and that card determines what group they're in, they get very excited. There's a lot of excitement built around what group am I going to be in today? What board am I going to be at in the room? And am, am I going to be on a window group? All of these things together sort of help students take ownership of their learning. And with so much support, when students realize how much support there is from their peers around them, uh, it really helps raise everybody up. We have students from all over the world, so every incoming class is 50% mainstream students, 50% English language learners, and we seek out diversity. So we generally have about 30 languages in our student body. In my opinion, multi-language learners should be talking as much as possible during every class and this structure really provides an opportunity for them. There are multiple languages spoken in the classroom, and so when students have to work with other students who don't speak their language, it forces them to do their best to communicate with one another in a common language. You know, whether that language is color coding on the board, which I love to see when students grab different colored markers to try to explain their thinking to a student who doesn't speak their language, or, um, if that language isn't showing their math or if that language isn't trying to speak English. I think this approach uh, is really helpful. So when you're working in a, in a thinking classroom, um, you have to have every single step of the way planned. You have to know what your questions are going to be. And it has to be much more calculated than what a traditional classroom is where you're just showing the students. Especially in the beginning, it takes a lot of time to develop these skills. And it's also frustrating because the students are not used to this type of work and they just want to sit down and copy notes. And so in this type of a class, 
classroom, it's so different and so, um, so much more rigorous, so much more thinking, so much more exploration. And you can't just throw a problem at a kid and say, do it. You have to know, you have to know what the steps are to be able to ask the questions to get them to the place that they need to be on their own. I have some students who joke with me on a regular basis that they should be the ones getting paid and not me. <laughs> um, and I, I like when they think that because to them, it, from their point of view, it looks like they're doing all of the math and they're doing all the teaching and they're doing all the supporting one another and they're doing all the finding out without me telling them and I think that's how it should be. So this the is negative two. Yeah. Will it matter if it's negative? No, we we change it negative later. Okay. He's really been a, a voice in the teaching community to promote thinking about our instruction and how to further it. People are seeing just the value in the way that he runs his classroom, and they want to emulate that. And, and he's very respected, and the students love him, so why not try this thing that's working for him? or what their classmates are on their boards at the end of the class, not what I or Miss Lyons or 
Ms. Clark might present them during class. Students are problem solving together. But most importantly, the biggest change from this year from years past is that there is an immeasurable, there's an immeasurable amount of joy in our class, mathematics classrooms this year. There's so much joy. And all of this is because of a book a math department colleague suggested last year on whim over Google Chat. And we decided to read it. And we ran with it. And it's taken us amazing places. Thank you to Mr. Garofalo. And thank you to Math for America for creating a community where I was easily able to find teachers reading the same book, working towards similar goals on a similar mission. I'm so grateful to my family for promoting my uniqueness as a young person and now as an adult for accepting me exactly as I am. Always accepting me. And I'm equally grateful to all of my students, I'll say sorry, to all of my colleagues, many of whom are here, to my administrators, <coughs> for trusting my creativity and my whimsy in a professional setting. It is because of all of you here with me tonight and so many more who aren't here, that I go to work and live my life every day proud to be the teacher and person that I am.